Hey y'all, Chris Bassett here, and I'm going to show you some solo strategies on how to get the weapon cases from the Juggernaut in the DMZ. Let's get into it. Modern Warfare 2's DMZ mode is really fun solo, and so I've been playing it solo. I collected all seven weapon cases by myself and extracted. Uh, the first thing you want to make sure is that your squad fill is turned to off if you're going to be playing solo. And next we're going to talk about your loadout. Uh, there's a few pretty important pieces of equipment that you're going to need. Uh, stims are definitely a must if you're running solo. Uh, armor plates can be hard to find, so you want to use a stim to boost your health back up. Uh, for your lethal, you'll take anything that does some pretty decent damage. Uh, Molotovs, thermites are good for damage if the enemies are immobile, uh, like the Juggernaut's pretty slow. Uh, I usually take a Semtex, though, just because that's my preference. And then for the uh, field upgrade, you're going to want to take the munitions box. Probably the best because it replenishes your bullets. Next, let's talk about weapons. Uh, typically, I take in an assault rifle just because it has the best overall purpose. Um, the most important thing you can put on your weapon for DMZ mode is a suppressor. Uh, the AI bots are far less likely to notice you uh, you can take out a few of them uh, the suppressor is absolutely a must-have on your insured weapon anything that says sound suppression is what you're looking for other than that the gun can be built however you like so scope stock extra magazine is always nice uh, but yeah but whatever you prefer all right so we're going to start up a match and then uh, i'm going to run down how i usually start the match the items that i pick up and then the strategies for each three of the Juggernaut spawn locations. So first thing you want to do when you spawn in is check your attack map. The area of the map that has the yellow uh, icon with the weapon case is where the Juggernaut spawns. Uh, there's three locations on the map that you can spawn. Zaya Observatory is the easiest. Al, Al Sharam Pass is probably the second hardest. And then Zawa Hydroelectric is uh, probably the most difficult. Before we go to tackle the Juggernaut, there's a couple of items that we're going to need. We're going to need some form of self-revive. Uh, being a solo player, you only have yourself to revive yourself. <laughs> so uh, a revive pistol, if equipped, will uh, give you a self-revive. Uh, there's also self-revive kits. Uh, they're typically found in like um, ammo depots around the map. Uh, it's a little bullet icon, and they're great locations around the map. For different loot, you can find armor vests, backpacks, gas masks, uh, and sulfur vibes. Lockers are a common place to find backpacks and armor vests. And then lastly, you can find silenced weapons, self revives, armor plates, vests, backpacks, all at buy stations. The uh, $25,000 M4 is actually suppressed, so you could buy that weapon to have a suppressed weapon. Uh, also, $75,000 will get you a self revive. Uh, vests and backpacks are pretty expensive, but they're worth it. Keep in mind that the buy station loot is randomized, so each different buy station has different stuff in stock. Uh, the buy stations look like little grocery shopping carts on the minimap. All right, so once you have a decent armor vest, a couple self-revives, and a good weapon, time to hunt the Juggernaut. If you do a secure intel mission, it'll show you exactly where the Juggernaut's located with that skull and crossbones on the map. Let's start off by doing the easiest juggernaut spawn, the observatory. Uh, you want to approach the observatory from the southwest. Uh, there's less AI over on this side of the map. Um, if you try to come in from the north or the south, it's pretty heavily enforced. So you want to drive up this road, and what we're going to be looking to do is go to this tower. If we can get there silently... Uh, we'll just climb up to the top of the tower and then parachute down into the observatory. So grab yourself a vehicle and uh, I'm going to speed up the video so that you can see what the approach looks like. There's the tower in the distance. Uh, like I said, you don't want to go up many of the main roads because there's AI patrolling. Uh, the one time that I did that, I ended up dying because they shot me off the ladder while I was climbing the tower. Uh, so the objective here is to be stealthy, be sneaky, uh, try not to make too much noise. And this would probably be the simplest one for you. So there's the tower. Uh, just make sure if you do see any AI or anything, just avoid them. Uh, hop up the rocks. And then when you get to the top of the tower, you're going to aim over towards the observatory, jump off the ledge, 
and then pull your chute and land on the telescope. When you do get close to the juggernaut, a little uh, notification will pop up that says juggernaut nearby. Now this is his fatal flaw. If you're at a higher elevation, he can't really look up and shoot you. So this particular method works really well, um, as do the other two where you gain high ground. If there's any way to like obstruct his view or be above him, uh, he just won't attack you. So grab the weapon case and then exfil as fast as possible. Anytime you're running from enemies, this is a good uh, example of when stims are useful. Uh, as you're running, just get out your fists because you run much faster when you're just at your fists. And then you can stim yourself to regain health really quickly. Uh, hop in a vehicle if nearby, and then you can exfil. Um, the public exfil locations are particularly dangerous because now that you've picked up the weapon case, you're on the map. Uh, there's players that'll want to kill you and get the weapon case from you. So out of the probably 20 times I've done this, uh, about half of the times somebody has, you know, come along and kill me. And since you're solo, it's usually a 1v3. Um, so you either have to be really tactical about it or uh, pretty sneaky or you just got to be better in a gunfight. And see there, my self-revive come in handy. Uh, AI kind of took advantage of me. But as soon as the chopper shows up, uh, you know, hop in and about five seconds, then you're out of there. If you do a rescue hostage mission, uh, you'll get your own personal helicopter that's not on the map. Uh, so you can just do that mission, and before you complete it by throwing the hostage on board, um, you just set him down next to the plane, then you'll have a chopper that's personally for you that's not on the public minimap. Also, if you run into teams, uh, you don't need to exfil inside the helicopter. You can ride on the side, there's like little flanges that stick out, or you can just jump on top of the helicopter. Uh, the blades won't kill you, but uh, you can still exfil. So here's a sneaky move I pulled on this team, or I actually rode out on the top of the chopper. The second most challenging weapon case is the Al Sharim Pass. You're going to want to come in from the north, and there is a rock wall that you can kind of work him around, and his line of sight is obstructed. It's right next to the uh, the main castle, whatever you want to call that. So we'll get into it. Um, I ran into a couple of uh, enemy players, so I killed them in the lobby, took their cash, and then used that to buy my gear at the buy station. So I'm gonna speed up the video and we're at the buy station. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you've got your essentials, right? You got decent armor plates. The extra health is essential. Uh, have at least a two plate vest, uh, three plate would be even better. And then I like to mix up my weapons. So if I have an assault rifle, then I also carry like a submachine gun because those two ammo types don't overlap. You're gonna want a munitions box as well because after you kill the juggernaut, you're gonna be pretty low on ammo. So when you do tr try to extract, uh, it's gonna be particularly difficult fighting a team with no ammo. So as we approach the pass, uh, take the dirt road up the side. Uh, you're wanting to try to be stealthy. Now I've seen him spawn in several locations. Uh, the most common is this, uh, this rock road that runs up the side. But I would leave your vehicle kind of out of the way because the, after this update, now the, the bosses DDoS your vehicle and destroy it. So that's typically the road where he walks down. So here I'm just going to make sure my ammo's full and then uh, make sure I'm ready to go. If you do need to go up the back route, there's this rope here and you can get into the fortress. But, I don't know, nine times out of ten, he spawns on this road. He'll kind of walk at you and see you can kind of hug the side of the wall and then he won't be able to shoot you, but you'll be able to shoot him. So you just take him down, take the case, find an exfil, and then get to it pretty quick. Um, I'm looking for a less uh, populated area because the AI around the airport and that fortress are pretty nasty. So I'm going to hop back on the four-wheeler and make my way there. Um, I'm, I'm also being aware of the map to see if there are any teams... Uh, I realize my four-wheeler is going to run out of gas, so I hop on another one because I don't want to get stuck in the middle and have to jog the rest of the way. So we're, I'm looking, and I realize uh, there's probably a team over there, so I'm going to try the airport instead. And if you're extracting solo, right, I'm going to hop off and then call in the chopper, but then I'm going to get out of there 
right? There's no reason to stand there in the smoke and wait. So I retreat to cover, plate up, and then you can use a vehicle. And this is probably the best strategy for extracting is to stay near, near your vehicle or close to a vehicle and then kind of drive around in a circle because you're harder to kill and then you can run enemies over. So once the chopper comes in, I hop on and I'm out. The final and most difficult juggernaut location is the hydroelectric place. So you want to check out your map and you'll see that he's located typically inside a pretty heavily reinforced uh, fortress. I don't like going in there because I die all the time. But this bridge, this bridge, you can get to that bridge. He's normally in there where the case is at. But if he does spawn, you come in from this northeast corner, work your way up, and there's like a little building here. This building has a ladder, and you can hug right there and then shoot him off this bridge if he shows up. Uh, he'll run up there towards that building, and there you can train him around. Uh, remember, he can't shoot like vertically. So if you're up in the air or above him, he can't shoot you. So we'll use a ladder. We'll climb up to the top of the building. And then as he's climbing the ladder, you just shoot him in the head. Uh, there's a hole in the roof and you can just run circles. So I'll, we'll demonstrate that strategy when I get to it. So I'm going to locate a vehicle and then uh, head over that direction. Uh, something that's also uh, interesting is if you equip your weapon that you want to level up while you're driving, you'll gain XP as you run over enemies, and discover locations. Uh, so that's an easy way to like equip a weapon you don't normally use and then just drive around to give it experience points. But so I'm approaching this the, that main bridge. Uh, we'll drive over the bridge, and then uh, I'll approach that house. Uh, now, this spawn location when he shows up is pretty uncommon. I've only had this happen, I don't know, 30% of the time. So there's the, the bridge over that direction. Um, so you hop over here. Here's that little cannon. You know this is the right building. Um, if you come inside, clear out the enemies. Uh, sometimes the AI will drop in uh, a chopper with enemies on it, and you'll be pretty much surrounded. That's why I don't really like this particular case location, is you just get overwhelmed, and there's no real good like cheese spots for the jug. That's why having a suppressed weapon is really good in this particular location because the enemies will just swarm you. Um, when I do clear out all the AI and get myself in a good position, I'll climb to the top of the building and shoot the juggernaut from up there. Uh, like I said, he'll come at me and the ladder will be the death of him. But so there's a there's the hole in the ceiling that you can drop back through and there's the, well, there's the guy, but there's the cannon and there's the ladder. So you know you're in the right spot. So we'll crawl up here and then you'll see to the other bridge, um, he spawns in and he'll be running at you, right? He's really angry. He wants to kill you. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, this, if he is inside the fortress, uh, I wouldn't even try to get in there. There's so many enemies. Unless you have a team, it's really hard to kill him. But there he is. So he's running at me. So he'll just run up this direction and then take your time. You know, there's enemies that'll snipe you so use the bags for cover you know go prone if you can and then plate up the munitions box and having extra ammo is pretty important on this uh, weapon case location because i haven't really found a way to avoid the ai so you're expending a lot more ammunition killing the ai as well as the jug so i know he's coming up the ladder here any second so i'm just kind of waiting for him and as soon as he pops out uh, he doesn't immediately start, sh you know, shooting you with the minigun, but it's pretty quick. So you want to drop down in elevation. And remember, his downfall is having to shoot up or down. or, And those are the times when he's immobile. So as soon as he jumps up here, I'm getting ready to jump back down inside, put a few rounds into him, and then, oh gosh, I got to jump down here. Um, now, if you don't kill him here... Right, you can keep running circles. So you'd run back outside the building, climb back up the ladder, and wait for him to come up the ladder. And then you have a few seconds when he jumps down. He's pretty easy to take out. So I hit him with a Simtex, um, any other lethal equipment work. But make sure you go for headshots. Uh, headshots do significant amount of damage compared to body shots. So there he's dead. Uh, something I like to do before I pick up the weapon case is just make sure I'm okay. Use your munitions box, full ammo, 
have a plan, like you know where you're going, which uh, vehicle you're going to pick up, what direction you're heading, because as soon as you pick up the weapon case, then you're marked on the map, and enemies, enemy players know exactly where you're at. So just, you know, do, do yourself a favor, be fully prepared before you grab that case. So I'm going to speed up the video. Uh, it's nice because the Xville location is pretty close by, uh, but it's just right across the map. So I'm going to hop in the truck and <laughs> slowly and sluggishly make my way over there. Uh, if you're in a big open area like this, it can be pretty intimidating. So at least try to find some cover in the rocks or at least something. Don't just stand out in the open. Uh, AI or annoying so I'm gonna take those out and keep my fingers crossed that no enemy players drop down on me but luckily the chopper comes in and I'm out of there all right so there's seven total rewards from the seven weapon cases the first one you get is the caution tape RPK weapon blueprint uh, this is a really good gun I really like it uh, only thing is it doesn't have a suppressor so I don't like to run that as my insured weapon but the camo looks awesome, and it does a really good job at killing AI opponents. The final reward for the seventh case is the biohazard skin for uh, Koenig. So this was, you know, the reason you probably watched this video. Uh, it's my favorite skin. I'm glad I got it. It looks pretty sweet. You can get the gas gas charm for your weapon. It looks like a little gas mask. That's pretty cool. The biohazard weapon sticker is one of the rewards. It can go on the uh, three locations on your gun. If you check out your profile, you can get a calling card and an emblem. Uh, you get the weapon crate emblem is like reward number six, I think. And then the other, I think reward number five is the calling card uh, weapon crate. And then one of the other rewards you get is in the war zone vehicle customization screen. Uh, you can choose the heavy chopper, and it gives you like a jungle camo, uh, jungle incognito. Hey, check out this other video right here. Um, I've got a link for Amazon Electronics in the description. Save some cash, no cost to you, help out the channel. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. If this was helpful, hit the like button. Thanks.